Hello everyone, this is Al, Red Sox fan, coming to you from Al, Red Sox fan, YouTube channel, hope all is well. We're going to bring you some Legends of Boxing PC game from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. What if promotion brings you nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, Night of Heavyweights. The main event, Oscar Bonavena puts his perfect record on the line defending his world title against the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis, the number one contender, 15 rounds for the World Heavyweight Championship. We will then, prior to that bout, we have Muhammad Ali defends his North American Boxing Federation title, 12 rounds against Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Prior to that, Jerry Cooney puts his United States Boxing Association title on the line, against Jimmy Ellis, 12 rounds. But we will start off the heavyweight fisticuffs with Rocky Marciano taking on Floyd Patterson, 10 rounds from Yankee Stadium. What if promotions brings you nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, night of heavyweights, up next on the channel. Joining us here at Yankee Stadium, Robbie Wartburg. Hope all is well. Our first fight is Rocky Marciano, the Brockton blockbuster, and Floyd Patterson. Marciano's actual record, undefeated, 49-0 with 43 stoppages. Floyd Patterson, first man ever to regain the heavyweight title in reality, was 55-8-1 with 40 stoppages. Marciano from Brockton, Massachusetts. Floyd Patterson, Brooklyn. New York. In our Legends of Boxing universe, Marciano is 3-2. Patterson is 0-1. Patterson was KO'd by Joe Lewis. He'll now take on Rocky Marciano. Marciano has, in his three wins, three stoppages. Uh, his losses, one due to cuts and one by a majority points decision against Sonny Liston. Marciano will have the edge in stamina and in punching power. Defensively, list of Patterson much better. So it's going to be Marciano's pressure against Patterson's aggressive counter punching. I'm doing A OK, -okay, Robbie. Thank you for asking. I'm glad you're doing well. As we approach the ring, 10 rounds heavyweights. Marciano in the red corner. Floyd Patterson in the blue corner. They get their final instructions from the referee. Round one scheduled for ten. The bell. Marciano comes out inside. He gets inside. Throws a couple of big haymaking shots. Patterson was able to evade them. Patterson from distance behind the jab. Lands a pecking jab and a grazing right cross. Marciano continues to put pressure. Patterson misses with a left and a right. Marciano is able to dip under. Patterson continues to throw. Hooking to the body and moving away. Good solid left hooks to the body. Patterson keeps Marciano at bay with a pawing jab but miss with the right hand. Patterson looking good so far. Patterson faints. Marciano out of position but he does not throw. Under a minute to go here in round number one. Marciano moves in, and Marciano digs a left right to the body and a left hook to the head, and Patterson is down. Patterson is down. Yankee Stadium erupts with those big shots from Rocky Marciano. Marciano in the neutral corner. The referee picks up the count. Eight, nine, ten. It is over. Rocky Marciano with the first solid shots that he lands annihilates Floyd Patterson. He feinted the right as he moved in, dug a left to the body, and then quickly came up to the head with a double left hook, knocking Patterson into La La Land, shades of uh, Harry Kid Matthews, when he knocked Matthews out in the second in the corner. Holy cow, Rocky Marciano steamrolls the man from Brooklyn, New York, Patterson went nine, I think it was nine rounds with Joe Lewis, and Marciano just destroyed him in just under 
one round. So Rocky Marciano back on his winning ways. Quite an impressive uh, victory for Rocky. Patterson has come out tough in his first two fights, now 0-2. He's been stopped by Lewis and now annihilated by Marciano. Joining us here at Yankee Stadium, D. Scott Howard. As D. Scott, as he jumped into the uh, press booth, says Patterson doesn't have a chance. And as he got into the press booth, it was good night, Irene. But it wasn't the Suzy Q. It was vicious left hooks. One to the ribs and then quickly up to the head with two hellacious left hooks snapping Patterson's head and sending him into unconscious la-la land. Patterson is now being brought to his feet will be put on the stool. He was knocked out close to ring center. The fans here at Yankee Stadium are still abuzz by that tremendous knockout by the Brockton blockbuster Rocky Marciano. Marciano hopes to move on to bigger and better things once again. Robbie Wartburg says, that was quick. So that was an annihilation. Let's just quickly look at the... Uh, Marciano landed about four to five punches. And that's all he needed to end Floyd Patterson's evening here in the Bronx. We move on to Jerry Cooney defending his United States Boxing Association title against Jimmy Ellis. Jerry Cooney, the defending champion, 7-3-1. and one. His draw was to Joe Baxke. Uh, he has stopped five opponents. He's lost three. One by majority points and one by split decision. Now he's lost three. One, he's won five by KO and two by decision. And he's been KO'd three times. He's been stopped three times. Jerry Cooney's overall record in reality, 28-3-0 with 24 stoppages from Huntington, New York. Jimmy Ellis from Louisville, Kentucky former heavyweight champion, former sparring partner of Muhammad Ali, 40-12-1 with 24 stoppages in reality. In the Legends of Boxing universe that we're running, Ellis is perfect, 3-0, and he hopes to wrest away the United States Boxing Association title from gentleman Jerry Cooney. Will this New Yorker fare better than Floyd Patterson? We shall see. Cooney will have the tremendous edge in punching power and a slight edge in endurance. Ellis, a much better defensive fighter. Ellis will have a... Uh, well, the control factor is about the same. We'll see how they fight it. That will determine the control factor. Ellis will try to work behind the jab, stay at distance. Cooney will try to womp with that left hook. The big Irishman, gentleman Jerry Cooney. We go up to the ring and ring center for our second bout of the inning evening if you're just joining us Rocky Marciano annihilated Floyd Patterson knocking Patterson out with a triple left hook one into the ribs and then two quickly to the jaw of Patterson the second one catching him on the way down but it was academic after the third one excuse me catching him on the way down but it was academic after the second shot that clipped Patterson on his chin that stoppage came at 221 of the first round. But here is the United States Boxing Association title. The champion, Jerry Cooney, in the red corner. The challenger, undefeated 3-0 from Louisville, Kentucky, Jimmy Ellis. Ellis has Angelo Dundee in his corner. Cooney, Victor Valley. As we will take a swig of water, fighters getting their final instructions. There are no questions from the chief seconds. They touch gloves. We prepare for round number one. Looks like Cooney's going to bring the pressure. Ellis looks to stay outside. Here's the bell for round number one. Scheduled for 12, USBA heavyweight title. And it's Cooney moving in. Cooney looks to load up. Missed with the jab and the right hand, but hit Ellis with a solid left hook to the body. Cooney again works his way in tight. Cooney digs the left to the body, but missed it. Coming up to the head. Ellis pawing with that jab, but it's Cooney again coming into range. Cooney winging wildly, bangs away at the body. Ellis counter punches, 
with a good one two good exchange even exchange Cooney with a fast start here Cooney continues to control Cooney doubles up with that left hook diving digging one into the ribs of Alice quickly coming to the jaw and Alice is hurt by that one a big shot by Jerry Cooney Alice now backing up Cooney pursues his prey Cooney looks to load up missed with the hook to the head but quickly bangs that left hook into the body Ellis back behind his jab. Two jabs missed with the right hand. Under a minute to go here in round number one. Ellis jab and a right cross. And Cooney, Cooney has an, uh, an abrasion underneath his right eye and we see a trickle of blood. 27 seconds left in round number one. Ellis aiming for that cut. Throwing out the jab. Clipping Cooney as Cooney looks to load with the left hook. At the bell it's Cooney with a grazing right cross but he missed the hellacious left hook a good round for jerry cooney though he did suffer a small cut underneath the right eye they'll quickly go to work on that in the cooney corner but we give round one to cooney he was able to rattle ellis d scott howard from the press booth in this one he says i'm going with ellis We prepare for round number two, scheduled for 12, USBA title on the line. Round two coming up. Fighters get their final instructions in the corner. Here's the bell. Round number two, and it's Cooney on the outside, working the jab. Missed the right hand, landed the jab, though. Came back with a left hook. Ellis now has an abrasion and a trickle of blood under his left eye. So it's Cooney's right eye, Ellis's left eye, Ellis back. Faints the jab and digs a 1-2 to the body, left-right into the ribcades of the big Irishman, Jerry Cooney from Huntington, New York. Cooney, looking to come back, throws a right and a left to the head. Ellis dodges and counters again. Jimmy Ellis digs very hard to the Irishman's body with a left and a right. Cooney loads up. Left hook to the body, brings it quickly to the head and a chopping right hand. Pushes Ellis back and hits him with another right hand. Ellis behind his jab now. Lands a good cross. Ellis looking to land again. Another one-two by Jimmy Ellis. Stunning Jerry Cooney. Under a minute to go here in round two. Cooney threw and threw hard, but he missed. 28 seconds left. Both fighters faint, but don't fire. Five seconds left in round two. It's Cooney at the bell. Missing the left hook to the head, but landing a chopping cross as he moved forward. That was a close round, but we give it to Jimmy Ellis, even though Cooney drew blood under the left eye of Ellis. We have it one round apiece. Victor Valley works on the cut in the Cooney corner. Angela Dundee works on the cut in the Jimmy Ellis corner. Dundee wants Ellis to continue to work that jab and work it overtime. In the Cooney corner, Victor Valley says, bang with that left hook, son. Round three, scheduled for 12, USBA title on the line. Jimmy Ellis working the jab as he heeds the advice of Angelo Dundee, pumping two, three, four jabs into Cooney's face. Cooney gets past the jab, works his way inside, and digs a left right to the body. Two good solid hooks. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange there. Ellis was looking to get out of dodge, though, but both fighters landed. Ellis back from distance. Ellis, a jab and a tremendous right hand, and Cooney is down. Cooney is down. Cooney is down. Ellis goes to the neutral corner. The count has reached six, seven, eight. Cooney just beats the count. The referee will come over and wipe off gentleman Jerry's gloves. Ellis looking to make it a short night and take the USBA title away from the New Yorker. Ellis goes for the kill. Ellis... Tries to smother Cooney. He has him on the ropes. He lands some shots, but not effectively. Ellis continues to punch as Cooney moves away from the ropes. Now Cooney ties up Jimmy Ellis, something he couldn't do against Michael Spinks. Under 30 seconds to go here in round three. Ellis has dropped the big Irishman. Again, they faint, but don't fire. They tie up. They break final six seconds, and they clash heads as Cooney was trying to grab desperately. No, I have not watched the Derek Jeter documentary, W. Vogs. Hope all is well. A big round for Jimmy Ellis. That's a 10-8 round. He dropped Cooney.
Cooney Rose at eight. Angelo Dundee telling Jimmy, don't get anxious. He'll walk into another one. Stick to the game plan. Box and use your jab. Jerry Cooney in his corner. Victor Valley trying to rev up the Irishman. His confidence is waning. He's telling him, you can do it, Jerry. Round four, scheduled for 12 USBA title on the line. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as Cooney comes out with pressure. Ellis met him. Both fighters land. Now they tie up. Cooney still trying to clear his head. Referee breaks them. Ellis behind that jab. Lands a one, two, three. Scoring punches, nothing solid. They scored, though. Cooney looks to load up. Missed with the left hook to the head, but quickly dug it into the ribs of Jimmy Ellis. Both fighters throw and miss. About a minute left here in round four. Ellis behind the jab. Now hooks to the body. Good job by Jimmy. Fainting. Cooney out of position. Cooney wings a left and a right, and then a left uppercut. He missed all three punches. Excellent ring generalship by Jimmy Ellis. Under 40 seconds to go here in round four. Cooney tries to work his way in. He does. He bangs a hard left hook to the body. Ellis ties him up. Now moves away. Jimmy back at distance. Ellis looks to pump the jab out there. Nailing Cooney moving forward with two jabs. At the bell. Another good round for Jimmy Ellis. He's keeping Jerry Quarry at bay and off balance. Jerry is not able to set his feet to throw those hard left hooks. Round five, scheduled for 12, USBA title on the line. Once again, it's Jimmy Ellis behind the jab. He lands a quick one-two and side-to-side -side movement. Jerry faints, Ellis moves forward, and Jerry lands a left hook to the jaw of Jimmy Ellis, and Ellis is rocked by that one. Cooney can punch, Ellis moves back to the ropes. Cooney bangs a left right to the body. Ellis needs to get off those ropes. And he does. He gets off those ropes. An excellent stop start for gentleman Jerry Cooney. Cooney looks to load up with the left hook again. He feints the hook to the body and lands a right hand. Comes back with the left hook into the ribs of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis on his bicycle. Under a minute to go. Ellis behind the jab. Lands the right cross. Now it's Cooney pressuring Ellis to the ropes. A jab, a right hand, and a left hook by Jerry Cooney. Jimmy in a bit of trouble. Final seconds. Ellis looks to fight off the ropes. He threw a one-two, but he missed as Cooney smothered him. A good comeback round for gentleman Jerry Cooney. He rocked Jimmy Ellis with a hellacious left hook. Ellis stood up to it, though. So after five rounds, it's a close fight. I think the difference is the knockdown. We have Ellis slightly ahead. Let's check the ringside score. Jimmy Ellis, 48. Jerry Cooney, 46. That's the way we, we see it, pretty much. Round six is upon us. Victor Valley revving up Cooney in his corner. Angelo Dundee's telling... Jimmy, you got a box. Work the jab, the right hand. He'll walk into another shot. Round six, scheduled for 12. USBA title on the line. It's Ellis in control. Ellis, two jabs and a right hand striking Cooney. Remember, Cooney has that cut underneath the right eye. A trickle of blood once again. Cooney comes right back, but he misses those shots. Cooney missed. He went head hunting and he missed. Ellis dodges, comes back with another jab and a right hand. Good start by Jimmy Ellis. It's a fast start for Jimmy. Jimmy continues to work the jab. He feints the jab and digs a 1-2 into the labanza of the Irishman, Jerry Cooney. Ellis. Oh! Ellis lands on the belt line close to the Franks and Beans. It's a very good start for Jimmy Ellis. Ellis working that jab. Lands a 1-2 to the head and a 1-2 to the body. Excellent job by Jimmy. Jimmy Ellis really working the jab, and then he digging digs very hard to the body. An educated left jab by Jimmy Ellis, and then he rat-a-tats Cooney's rib cages like they're drums with hooks. It's all Jimmy Ellis, left hook, and now a right uppercut snaps the head of the Irishman. Final seconds of a dominant round for Jimmy Ellis, and it's Ellis at the bell, landing a jab and a right cross. A huge round for Jimmy Ellis, Cooney goes back to his corner like a puppy with his tail between his legs. 
Cooney looks very distraught. And it's going to be very difficult for Victor Valley to rev him up now. Huge. That could have went 10-8. It was a dominant round for Jimmy Ellis. He never did hurt Cooney, but he dominated that round. Cooney breathing quite heavily now. Angelo Dundee in the Ellis corner says, we've got him in deep water now. Let's take him out. Round 7, scheduled for 12. USBA title on the line. Once again, it's Jimmy Ellis working that jab. But now he wants to stay in tight. He feels he has Cooney dead tired. Ellis wings away. Cooney counters with a left hook to the body and quickly up to the head. Ellis comes right back with a 1-2. Ellis is standing and trading. This could be a poor decision for Jimmy Ellis. Cooney wings a hook. Ellis ducks underneath it. Cooney having an opportunity here. And Cooney lands a quick 1-2 on the inside. Ellis looks to come back. Doubling up with that hook. Left right to the body. Then the left to the head. Ellis continues to punch on the inside. Backing up the big Irishman with a three-punch salvo. Left right to the body. And then a chopping right hand on the chin of Jerry Cooney. Cooney giving ground. It's Ellis punching away. Ellis lands another chopping right hand to the jaw and digs a left into the ribs of the Irishman. Cooney backs to the ropes. Cooney looks to load up, and he lands a left to the body and a right uppercut. That round, we see it for Jimmy Ellis. Jimmy Ellis, smelly wrestling geek, has joined us in the press booth. He says, greetings, Al, and the chat. Hope all is well. Smelly wrestling geek. D. Scott Howard. Cooney always has the puncher's chance, but Ellis is too quick. Seven rounds down. We have Ellis taking control of this bout. Cooney breathing very heavily. Sitting on the stool. Here we go. Round eight. Scheduled for 12. Cooney coming out. Bringing the pressure. Cooney dips. Left hook to the body and quickly one to the jaw. And Ellis is hurt. Ellis is hurt. Cooney needs the the opportunity now to punch Cooney again tries to duplicate that combination the double left hook he lands solid to the body but Ellis was able to parry away the shot to the head Ellis gets off the ropes faints a jab and digs a one two to the body Ellis's legs aren't there right now Cooney has to take advantage of this Cooney throws the left and the right but he misses toe to toe exchange Cooney got the better of it both fighters flurried there. Now Ellis comes back with a chopping right hand and a left to the body. Ellis's legs are not there. He is standing stationary. Cooney has to take advantage of this. Cooney wings a left and a right hook. Misses both. Ellis ducks, comes up, and Ellis bangs away with a left right. Both snapping the head of the Irishman. Under 40 seconds to go here in round eight. Cooney with a right cross and a left hook to the body. They're standing and banging. There's the bell. A good round for Jerry Cooney. Ellis's legs uh, seem to be gone. They were paralyzed by a really big left hook into his ribs. Cooney needed that round quite desperately. Cooney trying to maintain his USBA title. Cooney the worst for wear. Let's go to the ringside score. We have Ellis ahead by three. They have Ellis ahead by four. With rounds 9, 10, 11, and 12 coming up, Cooney has to do something big here. Round number nine, scheduled for 12, USBA title. Jimmy Ellis just moving, moving, moving on those unsteady legs, landing a grazing jab. They might not be effective scoring blows, but they're scoring. Again, Cooney moved inside. Jimmy fainted the jab, dug a left right to the body, then moved away. Cooney looks to get in punching position. He lands a left right left to the head of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis has a cut above his left eye, so a cut below and above his left eye. He is blinking. That blood will give him some issues. Ellis comes again a bit low. Referee warns him, but that slows down the big Irishman. Ellis back behind the jab. From distance, Ellis really on his bicycle, though his legs are unsteady. Ellis is able to land a grazing jab and right cross. Cooney's got to do something here. Cooney bangs away at Ellis's body, trying to slow up Ellis. You can see Ellis grimace 
with those hooks to the body, a left and a right. Under 30 seconds to go in round nine. Cooney misses. Ellis counters with a nice combination. Cooney backs up. Final seconds. Ellis moves forward a bit, and Ellis misses the left and the right. Good round for Jimmy Ellis. Even on unsteady legs, Ellis is able to box and win that round. Rounds 10, 11, and 12 coming up. Victor Valley is telling Jerry, you've got to do something big. Here we go. Round number 10, scheduled for 12 USBA title. But once again, it's Jimmy Ellis on the outside, feints the jab, and digs a right into the ribs of the on-charging Jerry Cooney. Cooney works his way in. Cooney lands frantically, throwing a combination to the head. And now Ellis is taking a beating around that face. His right eye begins to puff up. He has the cuts under and over the left eye and now swelling around the right. Ellis ties up Cooney. Cooney walks him back towards the ropes. Referee breaks them. Under two minutes to go here in round 10. Cooney again digs that body hard with a left, right, left. All three shots to the ribs of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis moves away from the ropes. Cooney pursues. Ellis looks to punch. Ellis missed the jab, but landed a grazing right cross. Ellis continues to throw. Missed the right and lands a left. Under 30 seconds, 10 seconds now. It's Jimmy Ellis punching at the bell, a 1-2. So Ellis was a bit hurt to the body, but he, he's outworking Jerry Cooney. I don't know who you give that round to, but it was Ellis punching at the end, and usually... The referee, uh, the judges, excuse me, remember the last thing they saw in a close round. The way we see it, Jerry Cooney needs at least a knockdown in one of these rounds, and he needs to take both to possibly salvage a draw. But it's starting to seem like Cooney will need a knockout. Unofficial ringside score, 97-91. So in the eyes of the ringside scorer, if Ellis stands up, he wins. Six minutes for Cooney to knock out Jimmy Ellis. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange, ring center. Ellis on the outside. Cooney tries to move in, and Ellis keeps him at bay. Two jabs and a right hand crash upon the cranium of the Irishman, Jerry Cooney. Ellis again lands a 1-2. Ellis side-to-side -side movement, back and forth. Ellis nails Cooney with a cross. He just doesn't have the same zip on it. Cooney walked right into it. Ellis laid the trap and the Irishman walked into it. Ellis again! This time he goes the other way and comes back with a left hook. Cooney seems befuddled. Cooney looks to throw. Digs a left to the body and lands a right uppercut. That snaps Jimmy Hell Ellis's head right back. Angelo Dundee screaming at Ellis. Stay away from him. Under a minute to go, and Ellis looks to punch. Two jabs and a right hand nails Jerry Cooney, and Cooney has blood coming from the nose. Blood under the eye and now from the nose. Cooney retaliates with a left to the body and a right uppercut. Ellis moves away. Now they tie up. There's the bell. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. A good round for Jimmy Ellis. He just continues to outwork Jerry Cooney. Victor Valley not mincing words in the Cooney corner. He's telling the big Irishman, his protege, you must knock him out. Cooney, you can see his confidence just gone. Ringside score agrees with Victor Valley, you must knock him out. Though he gave round 11, I don't know how, to Jerry Cooney. I guess the pressure of Cooney was enough and Cooney looks to catch Ellis now he's got to lay a trap he's going to stay on the outside it seems but it's Ellis who's quicker it's Ellis landing a left right left Cooney in trouble Ellis looking to stop him Ellis punching away Cooney on the ropes Cooney looks to fire off the ropes he digs a left to the body Ellis takes one step back now moves forward Ellis measuring with the jab and lands a jab and the right hand and a left hook Cooney starting to puff up. Cooney in trouble. The referee looking to stop it. Another 1-2 by Jimmy Ellis. About a minute to go here. Ellis pounding away at Cooney. Cooney seems defenseless on the ropes. Cooney not firing back. Ellis again goes a bit low. Under 30 seconds to go. They tie up. We're coming to the bell. And there is the bell. So Jimmy Ellis puts an explanation mark on this fight. A tremendous round 12 
in which he was able to pin the bigger Jerry Cooney, the harder punching Cooney, on the ropes and just rat-a-tat the living poop out of him, nearly stopping him. The referee gave Cooney every benefit of the doubt and Jerry survived the fight. But we believe he will drop his USBA title to Jimmy Ellis and Jimmy Ellis will go to 4-0 and oh, trying to set himself up for a wor world title shot. Let's go to the unofficial score. 116-110 for Jimmy Ellis. We see it about the same, possibly a one-point difference. So 115-111 we had it. But again for Jimmy Ellis. They collect the judges' scorecards here at ringside. D. Scott Howard looking to go two for two in his pronostications from the press box. He had Marciano with a quick win. He was right. And he had Jimmy Ellis over Jerry Cooney. Let's go to the three blind mice. We have a unanimous decision. 117-109, 115-111. 116-111 for your winner. And still undefeated Jimmy Ellis as he has taken away Jerry Cooney's USBA title. Jimmy Ellis from Louisville, Kentucky is your new United States Boxing Association heavyweight champion. Jimmy Ellis hopes to move on to bigger and better things. Ellis just was a lot uh, more effective as you can see, 76 to 46, those are not punches landed, those are punch points. But obviously, Ellis landed more. He did not land the harder shots, but he definitely landed the cleaner, crisper shots. He was just scoring. Uh, sometimes, you you know, they, they were like it was like a, a mosquito hitting an elephant, but he was scoring. And eventually, the mosquito wore down the elephant. And by the end of the bout, it was Jerry Cooney in the 12th nearly being TKO'd on the ropes. But he survived, only to lose his title by unanimous decision to Jimmy Ellis. Congrats to the new USBA heavyweight champion, the man from Louisville, Kentucky, Jimmy Ellis. Another fight down. We now go to our co-main event. 12 rounds for the North American Boxing Federation Championship, Muhammad Ali versus Riddick Big Daddy Bo. So far, fighters from New York are 0-2. Rocky Marciano from Brockton, Massachusetts annihilated Floyd Patterson with a triple left hook. One to the body, two to the head. The third one was academic as he caught Patterson going down, knocking him out in the first round at 221 mark. We just witnessed Jimmy Ellis winning a unanimous decision over Jerry Cooney. Riddick Bowe hopes to change that trend and take the North American Boxing Federation title away from Muhammad Ali from Louisville, Kentucky. D. Scott Howard from the press booth says, it wasn't like this when I was a betting man. Had to give that up in the 70s. Well, you're 2-0 and right now, Mr. D. Scott. Let's go to the preview of the fight. Muhammad Ali has had one fight, and he won the North American Boxing Federation title with that bout by unanimous decision. Riddick Bowe is 1-0. His victory comes by TKO. Let's quickly look at who they beat as we have a little bit of extra time. So let's go. Let's go save and uh No, let's go to rankings. Muhammad Ali won the North American heavyweight title with a unanimous decision over Taylor Filo Stevenson of Cuba. Sort in alphabetical order. It's easier to find Riddick Bowe that way. Riddick Bowe stopped the South African, Kali Nozia. Nozia gave him a little bit of trouble, but Riddick Bowe battered him and stopped him. TKO in the 10th round. And that's how we come to this North American Boxing Federation Championship. Main event still to come, Oscar Bonavena makes his second title defense, coming off a very close, controversial win over Primo Canera of Italy, in which Canera nearly stopped, nearly stopped Bonavena in the 15th round. 
So Muhammad Ali, in reality, his overall record, 56-5-0 with 37 stoppages from Louisville, Kentucky. He is your North American Boxing Federation champion. Again, he won that championship with a unanimous decision over the Cuban Taylor Philo Stevenson. Ali will have the edge in defense, endurance, and hand speed. He likes to jab and use the right cross. Doesn't like to fight too much on the inside. Bo, a very good inside fighter for such a big heavyweight. He stopped Kali Notsia in the 10th, the fighter from South Africa. Originally from New York, now fighting out of Fort Washington, Maryland. 43-1-0 and oh, with 33 stoppages. His one defeat was to Evander Holyfield, though Andrew Galata kicked his ass twice, but somehow found a way to get disqualified twice. Uh, Bo will have the edge in punching power. He's going to have to land something big. He's going to have to land something big. Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt, has joined us in the press booth, along with manager confidant, promoter and friend of Primo Canera's Mark Jones. Is he Primo got robbed? I, I I thought Primo got robbed too. There's a little questionable scoring in a couple of those rounds in Argentina. But Primo uh, did himself well. Here we go. 12 rounds for the North American Boxing Federation Championship. As the press box is continued to fill up here. To the ring we go. The champion, Muhammad Ali, will be in the red corner. The challenger, Riddick Bow, will be in the blue corner. Final instructions have been given. Angelo Dundee once again working a corner here. Once again for a pugilist from Louisville. It's Muhammad Ali this time. Riddick Bow has Papa Smurf, as he called him, Eddie Futch in his corner. There are no questions from the Chief Seconds. Actually, there is a question. Eddie Futch says, hold on a second, not so fast. What about that holding behind the head and hitting? Keep an eye on that. Eddie Futch also wants to know what's low and what's not. Are you going to give me the belt line? Now they touch gloves. As Mark Jones says, Primo will be back. Jim L., hope all is well. As Jim L. joins us in the press box. We prepare for round number one as both fighters go to the corners. We await the bell. There's the bell. Round one, scheduled for 12, North American Boxing Federation heavyweight title. Ali the champion, Bo the challenger. And it's Riddick Bo from distance setting the trap, and he lands a nice. He feinted the jab to the body and landed a solid right cross to the jaw of Muhammad Ali. Ali smiles as he moves away. Bo throws hard punches, misses. Ali looks to counter, puts the jab in Riddick Bo's face. Bo looking to land that right hand. He has it cocked. Now Bo moves in. Ali ties him up. Ali whispering into Bo's ear, and they're not sweet nothings, that's for sure. Ali does the shuffle. Ali opens up with a jab and a right hand. Ali dances away. Bo paws with the jab, but he can't land. Again, Bo paws with the jab as Ali moves side to side, talking to Riddick Bo. You're too slow. You're too slow. Under a minute to go here in round number one. Ali slides, comes back the other way. Two jabs and a right hand. Snap the head of Riddick Bo. Under 30 seconds to go. Bo looks to land, but he misses. Ali sneers and laughs at him. Final moments of round number one. Riddick Bo faints. Booyah! Right hand crashes upon the jaw of Muhammad Ali. And Ali was hurt by that one. Ali was hurt by that one. It was a similar combination. Uh, where Bo fainted the jab to the chest and boom with the right hand. He was successful twice, but this one was a harder shot. Ali goes back to his corner as Riddick Bo says, I wiped that smirk off your face. We give that round to Riddick Bo. Two hard shots, especially that last right hand. We give that round to Riddick Bo. Eddie Futch, Eddie Futch is saying, keep jabbing in that chest. Keep jabbing in that chest. Don't try to hit his head. Jab to that chest. And send that right hand upon his jaw and send him down. Round two. We gave round one to Riddick Bo unofficially. There's the bell. Ali looks a, more, a, little, a little bit more serious here. Ali feints the jab, lands a left hook. Bo 
Throws Ali, throws, they both miss. Bo pushes him away, back at distance. Bo trying to jab to the chest. Ali comes back, Bo parries away the jab. Bo looks to counter Ali. Again, the one-two missed by Muhammad Ali. Bo parrying those punches away. Bo has that right hand cock. Ali jabs twice, scoring with those blows. Riddick Bo looks for the right. Doesn't land it. He landed a solid jab, but missed with the right cross. Under a minute to go here. Riddick Bo. Jab right hand missed. Ali looks to set a trap. Ali looks to punch. Ali throws and misses. Bo is able to smother those punches when Ali gets in punching distance. Bo the taller, longer man. 20 seconds to go here in round two, and there's the bell. Not much action at all. A very tactical round. A very tactical round. But Riddick Bo did a pretty nice job. I give that round even. So first round bow, second round even. We prepare for round three. Angelo Dundee is telling Ali, you'll find your rhythm. You'll find your rhythm. Watch the right hand. He's trying to walk you into it. Eddie Futch has told Riddick Bow, try to walk him down now. Bang that body. You're the bigger, stronger man. Round three, scheduled for 12. NABF title on the line. Defending champion Muhammad Ali. It's Ali from distance. Ali doubling up on that jab as Bo tries to cut off the ring. It's Ali who is scoring. Ali with a jab and a right hand. Ali in a rhythm now. Ali punching. Another jab and a right hand. Bo is befuddled. Under two minutes. Under two minutes. And it's all Muhammad Ali. Ali faints two jabs and walks Bo into another right hand. Ali looks spectacular here in round number three. Bo bores in. Bo lands a left hook to the body and a chopping right hand to Ali's head. Ali moves away from the ropes. Ali stops the punch, and Ali ratatats Riddick Bo with a three-punch combination. Bo doesn't know what hit him. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. 40 seconds to go in round three. An excellent round for Muhammad Ali. Both men throw haymaker right hands and miss. At the bell, it's Ali scoring. Jab right hand, and Bo was hurt by that one. Bo's knees buckled, and Ali puts his hands up in the air at ring center. Watch towards Riddick Bo's corner as Bo goes back to his stool on gingerly legs. Ali now heads back to his corner as the referee ushers him back to the red corner. An excellent round for Muhammad Ali. A dominant round. You saw Ali's speed, Ali's mobility, Ali's ring generalship. Ali just walking Bo into the right hand over and over again until finally crashing home a solid right hand that buckled Big Daddy's knees at the bell that ended round three. Angelo Dundee very excited in the Ali corner. Eddie Futch says, you got to let your hands go, Riddick. Bo once again will press. Ali will stay from the outside. Round four, scheduled for 12. NABF title on the line. It's Ali fainting the jab, now landing the left hook. Excellent job by Ali. Bo bores inside, holding and hitting, landing a right hand to the side of Ali's head. Dundee screaming from the corner to watch the holding and hitting. Bo tries to do it again, and he does. He is holding Ali in place and banging away with the right hand into the ribs and up to the head. Ali gets his distance. Ali, left, right, left. It was a jab right hand and a left hook that scored for Muhammad Ali. Ali behind the jab again with a left, right, left. It's been all Ali in those past two segments. Now Bor, a Bo bores in once again, and he holds Ali in place and lands a hellacious right hand, left hook, right hand! And Ali says, no, you didn't hurt me. But those were good shots by Riddick Bo. Ali leaning on the ropes, waving Bo forward. Bo pawing with the jab, and he misses the right hand. Again, Ali on the ropes. Bo moves forward. Ali missed with the right hand. Bo measuring final seconds here in round four. Bo looks to throw, but it's Ali who's first. And there it is. He nailed him with a left, right. As Bo was coming in, he laid the trap, and Bo staggers into the ropes, and the bell will sound. The bell will sound. What a shot by Muhammad Ali. He laid the trap. Bo moved forward. Ali sprung like a cheetah. Left, right, nailing Bo on the jaw. Bo went into the ropes, and the bell saved Riddick Bo.
we give that round to Muhammad Ali. Four rounds down, scheduled for 12. North American Boxing Federation Championship. Main event still to come for the World Championship. Defending champion Oscar Bonavena from Argentina takes on the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis from Detroit, Michigan, 15 rounds. Ringside score, 39-37. Muhammad Ali. Wow, they gave Bo the first round. See, we gave Bo the second round, I'm pretty sure. But we have it about we have it the same. Round five scheduled for twelve. Riddick Bow bringing the pressure, and Riddick Bow again. He's holding. He gets inside. He grabs onto Ali. He's the bigger fighter, and lands a chopping right hand after digging it to the body. Ali, Ali shuffles, and Ali rat attacks five punch combination. Bo is in trouble. Bo is in trouble. He's hurt again. Bo moves back to the ropes. Ali moves forward. Ali pawing with the jab, pawing with the jab. Doesn't land. Ali now hooks to the head. Bo on the ropes. Ali throws and throws hard, but he misses. Ali looking to pound away, jabbing a right hand. Bo still on the ropes. It's all Muhammad Ali. Ali lands two more jabs, looking to set up the big right hand. Bo looks to fight off the ropes. Bo digs to the body. But his legs are gone at the moment. He leans on those ropes. Bo again fights off the ropes with a left and a right uppercut. The left was into the body. The right uppercut grazed Ali's head. But another big round for Muhammad Ali. Bo rallied a bit at the end off the ropes. Bo is in serious trouble. Ali is able to hit Bo over and over again. Another round in the books for Muhammad Ali. D. Scott Howard says, Ali was a master of the late round flourish. Jamel, I found Ali unbeatable in this game. Jamel, not sure who to root for between these two. Round six, we're coming up on the halfway point. As I slurp a bit of water. Ali looking very good. Here's the bell for round number six. It's Ali behind the jab. Beautiful four-punch salvo. Ali actually a one-two to the head. And then a one-two to the body. Ali shoves Bo away. Bo trying to land the right hand once again. Jo Bo throws the jab right. Misses. Ali counters with a one-two. Ali now looks to follow it up. But Ali misses with the jabs. Bo was able to parry them away. Bo looking very frustrated. Bo can't get anything going as Ali talking to him. Both fighters throw and miss. Eddie Futch says just punch, punch, punch to the body. Stop headhunting. But Bo is throwing everything to the head. He's missing. Ali's laughing at him, screaming, uh, you're too slow, you're too slow. Ali faints. Bo misses again. Now Bo tries to dig to the body. Ali pulls his head down. And Bo lands to the belt line. Final seconds here in round six. A sloppy round six. Bo has not landed. And now there's Bo. Bo landed a grazing right hand at the bell. I give that round to Ali. He didn't do much, but he did enough. He made Bo look like a fool. Round seven, scheduled for 12. Here's the bell. Angelo Dundee says, stop playing. Eddie Futch in the Bo corner says, start going. And it's Riddick Bo... Wildly moving in, trying to land. He lands a few scoring shots. Ali counters with a 1-2. A left and a right. Ali moves back at distance. But Bo again charges forward. A wild combination shoving Ali into the ropes. A couple of those punches land. They weren't effective, but they were scoring. Ali off the ropes. Misses. Bo looks to land as he hooks hard to the body. It was a hard left hook. The chopping right hand was grazing to the top of the head of Ali. Ali still on the ropes. Bo trying to wind up and punch but he's missing Ali is smiling at him saying you're too slow you're too slow and Ali jabbing away saying come on try to hit me Ali looking to set the trap and there it is booyah left right the right hand clips the jaw of Riddick Bo and Bo is hurt once again Ali spins him now it's Bo on the ropes Bo is in all kinds of trouble just under a minute Ali opening up Bo trying to smother him Final seconds here, Ali jabbing. Bo looking to fight off the ropes, and there's the bell. Another dominant round by Muhammad Ali. He is just having all kinds of fun at the expense of Big Daddy Bo. 
Bo still has that punching power, but he's not able to hit Ali. Ali seems to hit Riddick Bo at will when he wants. We're going to go to the ringside score in a minute. We have Ali well ahead on our personal scorecard. I would think the press booth in the chat has the same as we do. The ringside score, well, they have it slightly close. 69, 60, uh, five points. That's, that's a big lead, though. Six rounds to one. We have it the same, except we gave Bo round two, Ali round one. Round eight is upon us. Angela Dundee continues to implore Ali not to play. He says, this guy can punch. Here we go, round eight, and it's Ali. Ali on his toes. Ali jabbing, striking Riddick Bo as he moves forward. Ali continues to jab, and bam, another right hand. And Bo is down. Ali puts his hands up, and they finally usher him to the neutral corner. The referee picks up the count at four. Bo slowly rises. The referee will give him the mandatory eight. Ali saying, your time is done. For whom the bells toll, the bells toll for you, Riddick Bo. Ali goes for the kill. Ali trying to bang away. Bo trying to hold on for dear life. Ali, big combinations. Bo driven back into the ropes. Ali measuring. Ali lands the right cross. Bo goes low. Belt line. Ali still keeps him pinned on the ropes. Ali battering Bo. Ali continues to punch. Ali snapping the head of Riddick Bo over and over again. Final seconds here in round eight. Bo throws, misses. Ali comes back with an uppercut and a right hand. A huge round. Riddick Bo did not land one scoring blow, and he tasted the canvas. Though he was up at the count of four. Tremendous round for Muhammad Ali, and it is that right hand that continues to catch Riddick Bo. Finally, the dam cracked. Bo went timber. Ali standing up in his corner, leading the cheers here at Yankee Stadium. They're cheering for the man from Louisville, Kentucky, even though Riddick Bo is a homegrown son, though now living in Maryland. Dundee telling Ali, you look beautiful, but don't take it for, for granted. Round 9, scheduled for 12. Ali in complete control. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. They land, and they land from distance. Ali goes back, feints the jab, lands a right and a left hook. Beautiful combination by Ali. Bo looks to land up. He missed the left and the right. Left hook, right hand, missed by Riddick Bo. Ali comes back. Jab, right hand again. He's looking to set up that right cross. And now he feints the right and he lands a left, right, left. Three hooks to the head of Riddick Bo. Ali loading up, jab and a right hand. Ali missed the left hook. Ali jab and a right hand. Final seconds of round nine. All Muhammad Ali. And another one two combination. Ali smiles at a beleaguered, tired Riddick Bo. And keeps telling him, you're too slow, you're too ugly, you're too slow, you're too ugly. I am the greatest. Ali well ahead on our scorecards. Riddick Bull breathing quite heavily in his corner. Eddie Futch, or as, Papa, or as Riddick Bull calls him, Papa Smurf. Eddie Futch is asking Riddick, do you want to go on? He nods yes. He has that look like he, he did in those Galata fights in real life. There's the bell for round 10, scheduled for 12. Ali in complete control. It looks like he will retain his title. Ali lands a jab and a right hand. Bo's got to land something massive. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both men landed. Bo looks to load up with the right hand. He misses the right and the left. Both shots aimed at the head of Ali. Ali comes right back. Jab and another big right hand. Bo is hurt. Ali shuffles as Bo goes back to the ropes once again. Ali, measuring, lands the jab, looks to land the right hand. They tie up, but Bo is unable to move away from the ropes. Now Bo clinches. Bo will not let go. Ali continues to tell Riddick, Bo, you're too slow, too ugly. You're no good. 
Now Ali backs away. Ali comes leaping in. Missed with the left, but landed the right hand. Now Ali back at distance. Ali. Jab, 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 but no right hand. And there's the bell. He has dominated this fight. He is in humiliation mode now. Riddick Bo said he was going to knock out Muhammad Ali. The only man to kiss the canvas so far is Riddick Bo. Remember, the main event still to come. Oscar Bonavena, champion, number one contender, Joe Lewis. 15 rounds, world championship. Ringside scorer, 99-90, Muhammad Ali. 10-8 round in the eighth when uh, Ali dropped Riddick Bo for a four count. Here we go, round 11. Eddie Futch has told Riddick Bo, show me something. But it's all Muhammad Ali. Two jabs in a right hand, smacking Bo square in the face. Ali again a jab in a right hand. That cross is educated. Bo goes to the belt line. Under two minutes to go. Bo, left uppercut, right cross. And Ali felt that punch. He's blinking, but there's no blood. Ali now holds Riddick Bo behind the head. Referee gives him a warning. About a minute left here in round number 11. Riddick Bo bangs away at the body and lands a grazing right uppercut to the jaw of Muhammad Ali. Ali toying with Bo, but he's keeping himself in punching distance. They tie up. Ali continues to talk to Bo. Referee breaks him. Dundee from the Ali corner. And jab, champ, jab. And there's a beautiful five-punch salvo snapping the head of Riddick Bo. Everything to the head, lefts and rights. What fast combination punching by Muhammad Ali. 18 seconds ago, Ali opening up a jab and a right hand. Bo back to the ropes, and there is the bell. Three more minutes of boxing. Three more minutes for Riddick Bo to land a miracle. Bo is exhausted. He is battered. No outstanding cuts or swelling, just the norm, normal wear and tear. The only thing that is showing battered is his pride. Ali continues. He is not sitting down on his stool. He is talking to Riddick Bowl from his corner. They come to the center of the ring. They touch gloves, and Ali saying, you're mine, you fool, you're mine. Here's the bell for round number 12. Bo needs a knockout. Ali throws and misses. Bo exhausted. Ali talking to him. Ali dancing back and forth. Ali with a jab and a right hand, snapping the head of Riddick Bo. You can see the, the sweat go flying. Now Bo looks to load up. Bo throws, lands a couple of grazing shots. They were wild. Ali comes right back with a hook, a left and a right. Ali looks to load up again. He missed. Ali wants the knockout. He is setting down on his punches. They faint but don't fire. Final uh, 46 seconds of the bout. Ali holds and hits. The referee warns him. 35 seconds to go. Bo throws a big right hand and he misses. Final seconds at the bell. Both fighters throw and miss. Ali puts his arms up. Riddick Bo taps Ali in the tummy meekly and turns back to his corner. Ali now goes over to Eddie Futch. Riddick Bo congratulates them. Angelo Dundee goes over, congratulates them, but it's definitely a victory in our eyes for Muhammad Ali. Unofficial ringside score had it 118-109. We had the same score, uh, though they gave round 12 to Bo. We did not, so we actually had one more point for Ali. Um, Ali dropped Riddick Bo in the eighth. You see the 10-8 round. Bo got up at the four count. This is going to be a whitewash for Muhammad Ali. He will retain the North American Boxing Federation Championship. At least that's the way we see it. K-Fan, how you doing, my friend? He says, saved by the bell. K-Fan, in the press booth, in the chat box, chat... <laughs> In the chat says miracle Bo held on. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought Ali was going to stop him, but Ali was having a lot of fun. Didn't take too much damage. But you got to be careful. Bo could punch. And again, Angelo Dundee not happy with the way Ali plays at times. But definitely, we feel this is an easy Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali victory. We go to the judges' scorecards. Here's the announcement: unanimous decision, 119, 108, 118, 109, 119, 108 for your winner. And still. North American Boxing Federation champion, Muhammad Ali. So Louisville, Kentucky, 2-0. The New Yorkers, 0-3.
Here's the fight report. Ali, a total whitewash. 84 punch points. Again, that's not punches landed. It's punch points. Uh, effectiveness of the punches compared to Riddick Bo, 26. I don't think Riddick Bo ever hurt Ali. Riddick Bo's best round, he fought out of the blue corner. Riddick Bo never had more than five punch points, and that came in round one. So we did give round one to Riddick Bo. I got mixed up. I, so I agree with the judge, uh, the ringside scorer. He, that's the most punch points he had, five. Ali was dominant. We move on to the main event. Let's quickly uh, recap what has happened. Rocky Marciano, 10-round heavyweight bout to open up the contests here at Yankee Stadium. Knocked out Floyd Patterson at 2 minutes and 21 seconds of the first round with a triple left hook. The first one into the ribs, the second two to the jaw, the third one caught Patterson on the way down. He was already knocked senseless. Jimmy Ellis takes away the United States Boxing Association heavyweight title. From another New Yorker, Jerry Cooney, by an easy unanimous points decision. Though Cooney had his moments with some power shots, but not enough. Jimmy Ellis is victorious. Then, another Louisville, Kentucky fighter, the great one, Muhammad Ali, easily outpoints Riddick Bowe, dropping him in the eighth to retain his North American Boxing Federation championship. So New York was 0-3, Massachusetts 1-0, Kentucky 2-0, in those first three bouts. And now the main event, the heavyweight championship of the world. Oscar Bonavena undefeated. Joe Lewis undefeated. Someone's O might go. Those stranger things have happened in championship fights. Let's take a look at Joe Lewis and Oscar Bonavena. Oscar Bonavena, 10 0 with three stoppages in his last bout. Uh, Oscar Bonavena won the title by TKOing Gene Tunney on cuts in a very close, rugged fight in the 10th. Oscar Bonavena got that title shot by winning a heavyweight tournament. Uh, in the tournament finals, he outpointed Jimmy Young. In his first title defense, Bonavena survived the challenge of the Italian and European heavyweight champion. Primo Canera. Canera had Bonavina out on his feet in the 15th, but the clock just ran out. Had there been another 30 seconds in that bout, Canera probably would have stopped Bonavina and become the heavyweight champion. But Bonavina did enough to win. Controversial as it was, he did win. D. Scott Howard from the press booth in the chat. Patterson had a better chance against The Rock than Oscar has versus The Bomber. So he's 10-0. He's been quite impressive. Now the number one contender, Joe Lewis, 4-0 with three stoppages. Knocked out uh, uh, knocked out Floyd Patterson in eight, who Marciano just destroyed in one. Joe Erskine gave him a tough time in an uh, about offline. He stopped Erskine in the ninth. Joe Baskey, Baxi, excuse me, the boxer I created, who was supposed to fight Joe Lewis for the title, then lost a tune-up fight in Europe. Never did get that title shot. And basically went downhill after that. Uh, so we fought it anyway. Uh, Lewis won that fight. I think we did that for 15. No, we only did 10 rounds there. Lewis dominated. And then Lewis beat Firpo on the undercard in Argentina, uh, Bonavena and Canera. He stopped Firpo in a wild brawl in the 8th. So we move to the heavyweight championship. 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship from Yankee Stadium, the Bronx, New York. What if promotions presents a night of heavyweights? Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The main event is next. Oscar Bonavena. From Buenos Aires, Argentina. Overall record in reality. 58-9-1 with 44 stoppages. A rugged man. A man they call Ringo. In our universe, 10-0. Three by stoppage. 
and four by decision. Six unanimous decisions, one split decision. Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber from Detroit, Michigan. 68-3-0 with 54 stoppages. In our universe, 4-0, three stoppages and one unanimous decision over Joe Backsky. Lewis will have the edge in power. Lewis will not have the edge in endurance, a slight edge to Oscar Bonavena, though Bonavena is probably going to take a beating, so that endurance is going to wear down. Lewis is a tremendous finisher. He fights clean. Bonavena, he can be dirty at times. He's an average fowler. Bonavina just he likes to maul. He likes to maul. He's gonna throw hooks, 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 and maul and brawl. He's gonna bring it. Joe Lewis can fight inside, outside. He can knock you out with hooks, uppercuts, cross. It doesn't matter. He can knock you out with the right hand, the left hand. Can Oscar Bonavina, the champion, retain his title here in New York? Robbie Warburg says, I just had Jess Willard beat Lennox Lewis by split decision. That's why you play the games. You sometimes get those upsets. Uh, and Lewis could have an off uh, Lennox Lewis could have an off night in reality he did at times he got knocked out by Hasim Rotman he got knocked out by Oliver McCall uh, those were his two losses he came back to avenge those losses by stoppage uh, he, he knocked out Rotman and he stopped Oliver McCall I th did he fight a rematch with McCall I can't remember I think he did um all right, this is the main event, 15 rounds for the World Heavyweight Championship. The champion, Oscar Bonavena, 10-0. The challenger, the number one contender, Joe Lewis, 4-0. Someone's O, probably is going to go. Champion in the red corner. The challenger, Joe Lewis, in the blue corner. They move to the center of the ring to get their final instruction. Bonavena smiling, chirping away at Lewis. Lewis paying no heed to Oscar Bonavena. Any questions from the Chief Seconds? Lewis Corner says, you know, watch the rough stuff with Bonavena. Bonavena says, cheap, cheap, cheap. They touch gloves. They go back to their corners. We await the bell for round number one, scheduled for 15, the heavyweight championship of the world. That's once again I slurp one. Here's the bell, round number one. Lewis looks to be in control, and he is. Lewis goes right at Bonavina. Bonavina meets Lewis at ring center. It's Lewis ramming a left and a right hook into the body. Now quickly brings that right hand, a short right hand, to the jaw of Oscar Bonavina. Bonavina's as tough as they come. Bonavina, a wild combination. A few of those got through as he winged to the body and up to the head. Bonavena is a rough customer. Lewis standing in there. Right hand, left uppercut, right hand. And Bonavena just smiles as he walks Lewis back to the road. But Lewis will not move any further. Bonavena works his hands free. And Bonavena digs a left into the body and a chopping right hand into the jaw of Joe Lewis. Lewis looks to retaliate. Lewis, a right, left, right. Bonavina smiles again as he bores in. Bonavina, a wild combination driving Lewis off balance. Lewis looks to regain his balance. Lewis lands a right and a left and another right. Final 26 seconds. Bonavena undeterred. Bonavena windmills. Left, right, left, right. Lewis is tagged, but Lewis shrugs it off. Lewis moves away from the ropes. Final seconds of an action-packed round one. And it's Joe Lewis punching at the bell as he lands a left right to the body of the charging Oscar Bonavena. A close, rugged round, but we give that one to the Brown Bomber. Gil Clancy in the corner of Oscar Bonavena. He knows this is the way Bonavena must fight. Round two, scheduled for 15, World Championship. Bonavena defends his title here in New York, Yankee Stadium. And it's Bonavena now looking to lay a trap as Lewis moves forward. Bonavena, jab, but miss with the right hand. Bonavena again looks to punch. Bonavena, right hand, left hook. And Lewis ties him up. Lewis looks okay. Bonavena continues to punch. Miss with the left hook, but land a chopping right hand. Bonavena back at distance. It's Lewis jabbing, works his way in, digs a couple of shots to the body. Lewis stays inside. Lewis a four-punch salvo, two to the body and two to the head, all hooks. 
Lewis continues to punch. Again, a four punch salvo. Left, right to the body, left, right to the head. Bonavena trying to land the looping punches, but Lewis is getting in tight. The shorter, quicker punches are landing. Lewis digs a left to the body and a right uppercut, snapping the head of the Argentinian. Lewis in a rhythm here. Final 30 seconds. Uppercut, left uppercut, right hand on the jaw of Oscar Bonavena. Bonavena buckles. He's in big trouble. But it, we're coming to a conclusion. Lewis at the bell throws but cannot land hard. But Lewis buckles the rugged Argentinian at the end of round two. Noble Piercy has joined us in the booth. Just fought this fight on title bout two. Lewis a KO in the sixth. It was a total beatdown by Lewis. Well, thank you for sharing that. Awesome sauce. I have title bout two also on PC. And I have Glory Days Boxing on the table going to be doing a couple of middleweight tournaments I think I have an idea an idea in my head for glory days boxing about eight fighters I don't want to go nuts because I want to put them all online uh, we'll see fighters who fought Hagler a lot of good middleweights fought Hagler and lost the ones who lost uh, here we go round number three let's go to the ringside score 2-0 Lewis I can see that. One, round one was close. Round two was definitely a Lewis round. He hurt Bonavina at the end. Here's the bell. Round three. Lewis, Bonavina meet at ring center. It's Bonavina who's going to punch. Bonavina throws wildly. Lewis smothered those punches. Now it's Lewis coming back. Digs a left to the body and a right uppercut, snapping the head of the Argentinian. Ringo is not deterred as Bonavina bangs lefts and rights into the ribs and arms of Joe Lewis. Lewis, the shorter puncher, and a beautiful right, left, right to the jaw of Oscar Bonavina. Bonavina is hurt. Lewis bangs away to the body, left, right, left, right, as he bangs the ribs like a drum of Oscar Bonavina. Lewis measures. There's the jab. Right hook to the body, left hook to the body. Lewis looking to set up a big right hand. Jab and a right hand nail Bonavina. Bonavina on the ropes. Lewis hooks to the body with the left hand. Lewis measures and bangs away with the right hand at the bell. A huge round for Joe Lewis. I don't know how Oscar Bonavina can turn the tide of battle with each second ticking by. The title is going bye bye for Oscar Bonavena. Round four. In the Lewis corner, they're very calm. Chappie, his trainer. Freddie Brown, his cut man. In the Bonavena corner, Gil Clancy says, you, you Got a punch. Just punch. Hit him with anything. Here we go, and it's Joe Lewis again. He's not hes not afraid of Bonavina. Bonavina is not afraid of Lewis, but it's the shorter, quicker puncher. Left hook to the body, right hand to the jaw of Oscar Bonavina. Bonavina's hurt once again. Bonavina backs up. Lewis pursues. Left hook to the body, left hook to the head, and a right hook to the jaw of Oscar Bonavina. Bonavina smiles and says nobody's on the ropes. Bonavina looks to punch off the ropes. Bonavena throws a rock wild left right he misses Lewis moved out now moves back in Lewis looks to punch Lewis digs the body very hard Bonavena felt those body shots Lewis measuring measuring jab right hand to the jaw and a left hook into the ribs under the elbow of Oscar Bonavena Lewis looks to land Again, he is working that body. He paws with the jab and goes to the right, right hand of the body. Toe to toe exchange, even exchange. Lewis looking quite awesome. Under 30 seconds to go here in round four. All Joe Lewis. Bonavina ties him up, tries to spin Lewis. Lewis refuses to be spin. The referee breaks him. Final moments here in round four. And it's Bonavina, left, right, landing on Joe Lewis's noggin. At the bell, oh my lord, he windmilled a left hook and a looping right hand that caught Joe Lewis cleanly. But still a huge round for Joe Lewis. Four rounds in the books, all for Joe Lewis. Gil Clancy telling Oscar, work the body, work the body, try to back him up. In the Lewis corner, they're telling Joe, who's very calm, just keep doing what you're doing. Round five, scheduled for 15. It's all Joe Lewis. It's Bonavina from distance. Lewis easily gets by the jab of Oscar Bonavina. 
Lewis bangs the body with a left and right hook. Lewis again bangs the body. He's looking to wear down the body of Oscar Bonavina. He's nailed him to the jaw. Even though he's hurt him, Bonavina stood up. And again, Lewis jabs and throws a right to the body of Oscar Bonavina. It's all Joe Lewis. Lewis missed the right hand to the head. Bonavina ducked. Lewis digs a left into Bonavina's side. Again, it's all Joe Lewis. He is battering that body of Oscar Bonavina. Bonavina's going to be a sore puppy. Bonavina, a looping hand, missed with the right and the left. Wild swings by Bonavina. There, two jabs, right hand, left hook, right hand by Joe Lewis. Bonavina staggered back into the ropes. Bonavina is hurt. 21 seconds left. Big shots by Joe Lewis. Bonavina trapped on the ropes. And at the bell, they fire away. Lewis got the better of it. Another big round by Joe Lewis. A frustrated Oscar Bonavena goes back to his corner. He has no answer for the Brown Bomber. Another round in the books for Joe Lewis. The crowd is on its feet here. They want a Brown Bomber victory here at Yankee Stadium. Round six scheduled for 15. Both fighters throw haymakers and miss. Bonavina charges at Lewis. A wild combination. It was effective in its awkwardness as Bonavina landed to the head and body of Lewis. Lewis backs up, now stands his ground. But Bonavina charges again with a wild right uppercut and a left hook, both catching Lewis. Lewis looks to shorten his punches up. Missed with the right, but dug the left to the body of Oscar Bonavina. Lewis now with a left uppercut and a right uppercut on the inside, snapping the Argentinian's head. Bonavina looks to flail away. He throws. He gets about two shots into the body. There were hooks. Both fighters smother one another. Under 40 seconds to go here. Lewis lands short hooks on the inside. Two to the head, two to the body. Bonavena comes right back, and Bonavena clips Lewis on the jaw. That was the best round for Oscar Bonavena. Wild and charging, he was the bull of the pampas. We give round six to Oscar Bonavena, but Bonavena is wearing down quickly. Lewis continues to put heavy damage on Oscar Bonavena, but we give round six to Bonavena. So did the ringside score. Gil Clancy in the Argentinian's corner. Oscar Bonavena says, that's what you have to do. You just got to keep doing that, Oscar. Round seven. Both fighters off the stool. Here's their bell. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as they just throw haymakers at ring center. Crowd is loving it. Lewis, bang! Left hook to the body, left hook to the head, and a short right hook to the jaw of Oscar Bonavena. Bonavena buckles. He tries to tie up Lewis. Lewis pushes him away. Lewis looks to land. Lewis hooks to the body and quickly brings it up to the head. It was left hooks. Lewis measuring with the jab, and there's the right hand. Lewis again measures with the jab, and right hand, left hook, right hand to the jaw. Bonavena ties him up. A minute to go here in round seven. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Lewis looking to end the night for Oscar Bonavena, and Lewis feints the right, left hook to the body, and brings it up to the head. 34 seconds left in round seven. Oh, Joe Lewis. Oh, right uppercut, left uppercut as Lewis moves side to side in tight, snapping the Argentinian's head. Final seconds, and Lewis just rattling Bonavena at the bell. A huge round for Joe Lewis. He has done everything but knocked the rugged Argentinian down, but eventually the dam will break. Tony Martin says, Ringo! Another effective round for Joe Lewis. 69-64 would come up on the midway point of this 15-round bout. Round eight. It's Lewis bringing the pressure. Lewis, left hook to the body, right hand, left hook, right hand. Bonavena buckles. Bonavena is shoved off balance. Lewis measuring with the jab. He hooks to the body, brings the left to the head, and a right hook to the head. Bonavena in trouble. Lewis continues to bang the body with hooks. And, and that's it. That is it. Seven shots. Seven shots. And the referee has leaped in. 
The referee has leaped in as Joe Lewis was just like a machine rat-a-tatting the Argentinian Oscar Bonavina until the referee stopped the slaughter here in round eight, 59 seconds into round eight. Lewis just hurt Bonavina, worked him to the ropes, and he just kept punching away, punching away, landing and landing and landing. And finally, with Bonavina not retaliating, not throwing anything back, the referee has seen enough. He has stopped the bout. Bonavina complaining why, but Bonavina, I think it was the right thing as he was just going to get massacred. It was all Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, arms in the air as he's being congratulated by his corner team. The crowd here at Yankee Stadium is on their feet cheering for the Brown Bomber. Joe Lewis is your new heavyweight champion with a 10th round TKO of Oscar Bonavena. Bonavena's perfect record goes out the window. Joe Lewis goes to 5-0 with this stoppage victory, and he takes the world title. D. Scott Howard, mercy. I'm off to the betting shot. D. Scott Howard ran the table. He had all the bouts correct. A big night of betting for D. Scott Howard. Robbie Warburg and Jack Sharkey takes down Marciano in a majority decision. Well, that's quite an upset. Though I think Marciano is not fairly rated in this game against boxers. I, I, I really hope that Gary takes a look at that. Uh, I don't think he's fairly rated against uh, uh, the T-Raider, the tactical fighters. I, he's rated too low. I'm not saying he's got to be a 9, but he should not be a 7. He should at least be an 8. He, it's, it's just he's rated slightly too low. 8 or 9, to be honest with you. But again, it's a wonderful game. So, As D. Scott Howard says, Glad I'm not betting on your fights, Robbie. Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Love the bomber. Fun to see him destroy Bonavina. I thought, it was a, I thought this would go this way if Oscar couldn't catch him with something. All right, so let's for, we're going to get the official decision in a moment. Uh, let's just go to the fight report. I mean, it was a bone a 78 in under in under eight rounds. Okay, Lewis scored 78 punch points. Again, that's not punches landed; it's just the effectiveness of the punches. Bonavena scored 24. Bonavena is best round. He never scored more. Well, right uh, the uh, round six. He, he we gave him round six. He had six punch points there, and round one he was not bad. But uh, a really dominant effort by Joe Lewis. And now the official announcement. Your winner by technical knockout at 59 seconds of round eight and new heavyweight champion of the world, the Brown Bomber from Detroit, Michigan, Joe Barrow Lewis. And the crowd goes wild. Steeler Fan 1933 says, Can you edit the Yes, you can. You can edit the ratings. I don't though. I don't. If I make if I make a fighter, like I made Joe Baxky and I made Tyson Fury, those are my ratings. And I, I've you know. But no, I won't. No, I respect his ratings. I'll just show you. I've talked about this before. So Joe Lewis wins. The heavyweight championship. What a fun card from Yankee Stadium. Rocky Marciano in the first bout, scheduled for 10, knocks out Floyd Patterson, 221 of the first round. Jimmy Ellis takes the USBA title away from Jerry Cooney. Cooney, the defending champion, easy unanimous decision in 12. Muhammad Ali, easy unanimous decision over Riddick Bowen, 12, to retain his North American Boxing Federation. And Joe Lewis annihilates Oscar Bonavina to take Bonavina's world championship. Fun night of heavyweight boxing from the Bronx. Now, I'll just show you quite quickly. So, Rocky Marciano. He's a nine against a pressure fighter. 
or a P. I call it a pressure, a physical fighter, right? He's a nine. He should be a ten, but a nine's fine. He should be against a tactical fighter, a T. He's a seven. He should be a nine, no worse than an eight, but he should be a nine, because I want to show you something. You cannot rate a guy lower than guys he's actually beat in real life, depending on you know. Obviously, Lewis, he got Lewis at the end of his career. But I just want to show you something. He beat Joe Walcott twice. He beat Ezra Charles twice. This is just my point. Ezra Charles is an 8 and an 8. How can Ezra Charles against... Again, they're going to say, well, Ezra Charles was a... I love Ezra Charles. Great fighter. He's an 8 and an 8. He beat Ezra Charles twice. <laughs> Ezra Charles is a tactician. Excuse me, is a tactician. Right? Right? Uh... He should be at least a 9. and Against a pressure fighter, he should be a 10. Or physical fighter, excuse me. A 9's fine. But against a tactical fighter, he should not be a 7. He should be at least a 9. An 8 at worst, but there's no way. He should not be a 7. Um, Joe Walcott. Joe Walcott. Joe Walcott is a 9 and a 9. Rocky Marciano and Joe Walcott is what? A tactical fighter. Rocky Marciano knocked out Joe Walcott twice. Joe Wal so at worst, Marciano should be a 9 and a 9. The way I would rank Marciano, I'd have a 10 against a physical fighter. And you can have an adjustment for eras. You know, they should put that in against bigger fighters. You can say, but you'd have to do a whole weight thing with that. But again, if we're just going off performance disregard the size differences of heavyweights as they go Walcott is a 9 and a 9 Marciano is a 9 and a 7 it doesn't make sense to me I love this game I just think the rating they really underrated Rocky Marciano at worst he should be this 9 and a 9 one last look at Marciano's card I just wish they would read and I'm not saying take a look at some other fighters too I'm just saying this is the one that really jumps out at you Nine against a physical fighter, seven against a tactical fighter, but yet two guys who we beat twice are rated better against tactical fighters, and they're tactical fighters, and he knocked them. Well, no, he won a decision against Charles, and he stopped them in the eighth. He, he should be at least a nine and a nine. Me, I think he should be a ten and a nine. Let's look at now Jack Dempsey, who you can say is slightly overrated in reality. I mean, possibly had his gloves loaded when he beat Jess Willard. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, it's a possibility, his glove. And, not, not that, and then he really fought nobody after winning the title. And then Gene Tunney beat him twice. Again, he was, he was old by then, but let's go to Dempsey. It, it just doesn't... I, I get it. There's a lot of bias against Rocky Marciano unfairly because, you know, people always... I'm not saying he's the greatest heavyweight, but come on. <laughs> Jesus. And it's my pet peeve. And that goes with a lot of different things. Um, let's do alphabetical because it's just easier to find Dempsey. And then we'll thank everyone. Okay, Dempsey. Dempsey. Nine and an eight. Nine and an eight. He lost twice to Gene Tunney. How is he an 8 there? And Marciano's only a 7, who Marciano beat Ezra Charles twice and Jersey Joe Walcott, who have better ratings against tactical fighters. Doesn't make sense. Marciano, no worse, should be a 9 and a 9. I would rank Marciano, once again, one last look at Marciano's card. I would rank Marciano, just me, and I could be a bit biased, but I don't think I am. He's got to be at least a 9 and a 9. If Dempsey's a, a, that, he's got to be a 9 and a 9. Again, Dempsey, in my opinion, great fighter. He's slightly overrated in history. Look, look to see who he beat. And again, there's questions on whether his gloves were loaded when he beat Willard. I'm not saying if it's right or wrong. They're legitimate questions. Uh, me, this is the way I would change it. It'd either be a 9 or a 9, and if I had my wish, it'd be a 10 against... I think the P's for a physical fighter, a T's for a tactical fighter. It'd be 10-9. 
Look at Ali. Pressure 10, 11. I think that's fair. I really do. Maybe he should be... Because this is... I, 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 I think this is... Ali, to me, this is in his prime. Okay? Where Marciano is like... I, I don't know where they come up with those the, the control ratings. Everything else is fair. I just don't think... And it, this game is... you got to have the control. Again, the dice gods dictate, you know? Ulysses S. Grant. How you doing? He says, go Astros. <laughs> so, anyway, fun game. Highly recommend it. Love this game. You can create fighters. You can do a, a fictional... Uh, it's a really wonderful game. And there's a free demo if you go to ASG Games to see if you like it. Noble Pierce, he says, I think Marciano isn't strong enough in title bout two. He has a losing record. Four and six. He's done well for me in title bout two. Again, he's not always going to win. This is wild. Mike Tyson and uh, Jim Jeffries, they fought twice. 10-round draw, 12-round draw. Our next fight, I might give them a, a fight offline that they should win. You never know in boxing. And then fight a 15-rounder against them online. So, so once again, we had a lot of fun. Greatly appreciate everyone's time. Marciano knocks out Patterson in one. Ellis, unanimous decision over Jerry Cooney. 12 rounds to take Cooney's USBA title, United States Boxing Association title. Muhammad Ali defends with a 12-round decision over Riddick Bowe easily. He retains his North American Boxing Federation title. And Joe Lewis stops Oscar Bonavina in the eighth in a beatdown to take the World Heavyweight Championship. From Bonavena, Joe Lewis is your new world heavyweight champion. I'd like to thank Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt, Ulysses S. Grant, Noble Piercy, D. Scott Howard, Robbie Wartberg, Tony Martin, K. Fan, Jim L. Hope all as well, Mark Jones, trainer, promoter, and confidant of Primo Canera, uh, Smelly Wrestling Geek, W. Vogs 18. D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. It was fun. And I'm going to take a quick shower, hit the hay, and God bless everyone. Hope you have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend and a wonderful every day. Stay safe, be smart, treat people the way you, you want to be treated. If you enjoyed the stream, hit the like button. It does help. Hit the like button for the content creators who, who you like, who do the streams that you like or videos you like. Check out all the other wonderful content creators in our community. There are many. Um, and thank you. Greatly appreciate your time. So, till next time, God bless. Love you all. Bye-bye. Joe Lewis is the new world heavyweight champion, stopping Oscar Bonavina in 8. Ali defeats Bo in 12 to retain his North American Boxing Federation title quite easily. Jimmy Ellis defeats Jerry Cooney, taking Cooney's USBA heavyweight title away quite easily by unanimous decision. Rocky Marciano starches Floyd Patterson in one. God bless.